this. It's Green Castle Antrim Blue Devils football on midpenbroadcasting.com. This is a production of midpenbroadcasting.com, where over 70 local sporting events a year stream live to your PC, laptop, phone, and tablet. Tonight's Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils game is brought to you by f and Trust. They're in the community and 100% local. Come to the right place for local banking. Member FDIC. Antrim Insurance, your local Erie insurance agent. Waste management, environmentally friendly technologies, and advanced innovations. Remax Premier Executives Agent, Lois Baer. Del Martin Incorporated, a full-service advertising agency serving the tri-state area for 35 years. Lecron Comfort Solutions, serving all of Franklin County with professional service and installation. Brothers Pizza Dine-In, carry-out and delivery. 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle. Klein Tours, New York City, Atlantic City, and more. Visit kleintours.net for complete tour schedule. Now, with the play-by-play, -play, here's Greg Hoover and Mike Montadoro. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to beautiful Cayley Field at the Greencastle Antrim Athletic Complex as we are moving right along with Game 4 of the 2014 football season. Tonight, the Blue Devils play host to the Big Spring Bulldogs in the opener for both teams in Mid-Penn Colonial Division play. Tonight's pregame show brought to you by Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. Antrim Insurance, 169 South Antrim Way, Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street in Waynesboro. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Hoover alongside the sometimes controversial but never crude Mike Montador on what is simply a beautiful night for football. Outstanding night for football. Weather's beautiful tonight. Uh, could, could not ask for a better night. We've had great nights. The Littlestown game was the most humid game we've been to before. Even the opening weekend, great nights for high school football. That, that game probably was one of the most humid games ever. Ever. Yeah, it was it, awful. It really was really bad. Tonight, 69 degrees here at, uh, at the start of our broadcast. Barely a, a wind going through the area. Just just one of those nights where a little later on you might need to wear a jacket or two. should be good. Blue Devils coming back into town after the trip to West Perry last week, sporting a 3-0 record and actually three games where they really haven't been tested to take on a very defensive-minded Big Spring Club who's allowing just 7.6 points a game to go along with their 2-1 record. Should be an interesting matchup. It should be an interesting matchup. The, the, you know, as we start comparing scores and looking at games, I think the one thing that really kind of sticks out to us is the Boiling Springs matchup last week. We, you know, coming into it, you're like, all right, how good is Big Spring? And then you look at the Boiling, or the Boiling Springs score, you look at that and you go, and eh, maybe it's not what we thought it was right. going to be. All right. They beat West Perry in game one, 28 nothing. Surprised us by beating Dover 10-9 to because Dover crunched Shippensburg. Right. And, but Shippensburg, you know, a lot of things didn't go well for them. And then we thought it would be an a, a easy game for uh, against Bowling Springs. Lost that one 14-7. to Remember last year, Mike, it was a 45-14 uh, win behind then senior Ashton Byers. Ran for 301 yards and five touchdowns. And Greencastle just ran at will last year. Year. They ran it well last year. Ashton ran off some big runs, and that they kind of uh, that night kind of set the Big Spring football program back a little bit. They had some issues after that game, and and trying to get themselves back on track. Coach Barry has spent the off season, uh, as he said in the paper this week. He said we're going to have to after that game work on defense. Defense is going to have to be it. And I don't know. Uh, I spoke with Darwin Siler last night on Chalk Talk, and I just have yet. I just can't fathom a coach that takes over a program and doesn't say you have to play defense, you got to control the clock and 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 be a good punting team. Mm. Like I, I don't see how when you take over a program that's not your first priority because you can control some of those things. Right. Particularly, and you know you've heard it, you, you, we've heard it, we've said it. Defense wins ball games, and defense wins championship games too. And so you can't have a a, a good program without great defense so you, you, you have to work on that Barry took over in a tough situation they were three years ago their head coach got suspended mid-season he took over uh, last year was really his first full year at the helm this year the second year and they've seen some good things already they have seen some good things now coach Baker was there for a while with them last year kind of splitting time and duties uh, coach Baker's a good guy longtime football guy it's around to help coach Baker's not helping this year uh, uh, but, you know, you got some of his expertise last year to help carry you through. So so Big Spring trying to turn the corner. They're trying to be that team, that James Buchanan from last year. Right. 
it, and we'll see what they can do tonight. When we return to the Antrim Insurance pregame show, we will take a look at the Blue Devils' opponent more in detail, and uh, we'll do that right here on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. Hello. Okay, people, here's your chance to come clean. Been okay. punished? What did you do? I backed into a tree. Oh, I got dinged at the mall. I hit black ice, then a parked car. And your punishment was? They, they raised my, my auto, auto premium. premium. Here's how to stop the punishment. Get Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. With Rate Lock, you'll get a low rate that stays low, even if you file a claim. You're locked in until you change cars, drivers, or your address. Oh. Which means when you call on us, you'll feel like you're supposed to feel relieved. For complete details or to get a seriously good quote, call Antrim Insurance. In Greencastle, call 593-0500. In Waynesboro, call 762-4565. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with Erie. Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. Insured must meet necessary underwriting guidelines. Premium may change if you make policy changes. Not all products are offered in all states. Patent pending. It's home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. Every day, Fast Signs helps businesses with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. At Fast Signs, we're innovators, planners, and designers, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Signs today. Visit www.fastsides.com or visit us at our Greencastle and York locations. Brothers Pizza is a proud supporter of the Greencastle Blue Devils. Brothers Pizza offers a full menu and breakfast is served seven days a week. Don't forget Brothers Pizza for your next football party or a special event. Our menu selection is great for football parties, birthdays, and other special occasions. Dine in, carry out, and delivery. 50 Pine Drive, Greencastle, next door to Comfort Inn. Phone 597-5322 or order online at mybrospizza.com. Live and local, this is midpenbroadcasting.com. Welcome back to Cayley Field. You just had a chance to watch the Greencastle Antrim High School Marching Band. They'll be hosting their uh, band festival tomorrow night right here under the lights at Cayley Field. And uh, free admission, a nice night of entertainment. So come on out and see them. Greg Hoover, Mike Monodora with game number four of the 2014 campaign. The Bulldogs now in year two, as we mentioned with Coach Mike Berry. They're playing some good football heading into conference play. They return Gary Chestnut under center, and they like to give the ball to Tristan Cooper, who accumulated 131 yards on the ground against Greencastle last year, and then Tristan Robb, they're not related. No. This first name thing. First okay. Name, okay. Right. He ran for 216 yards on 16 carries last week. Impressive performance from him. Yeah, and those are the two guys coming into it. If you're going, you know, if you're going to come out here and you're going to focus on a couple things, it's taking the two Tristans out of the game or limiting their big runs. They're going to get carries because that's what they do, but you got to limit it to uh, at most a 10-yard gain. They can't rattle off 15, 20-yard runs. Right. Uh, tonight, the the Blue Devils will will have a little different look and in, uh, in the likes of a quarterback as Seth Sprague, or excuse me, Sam Sprague will go under center for the first start for him. Uh, last year. Sprague was the starting quarterback for game one against Chambersburg and then uh, moved to the wide out position at Brett Myers came in and, and uh, Brett Myers now I got it Spencer Myers came in Spencer is at Brett's wedding this weekend and uh, that's why he can't be here now his older brother was the quarterback of the same team. You know, that's pretty neat tradition. Right. But it's obviously he's not the quarterback of that family because he would never have scheduled a, a wedding on a on a weekend, on a there's Friday a football, night game. football yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, wait to wait to spring or something. It was summertime, but anyway, I know they're listening out there, Myers. I hope everything's going well for you, and congratulations to you and your family. And uh, we'll 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 give you what's happening here in this one. But Sprague has played twice under center this year so far in in uh, second string roles. Uh, done well. Hasn't yet to throw a pass. 
But last week he ran for 84 yards on four carries and three touchdowns. So, you know, there, there might be a little something different in the backfield for the Blue Devils. It might be a little something different in the backfield for the Blue Devils. And, and interesting enough, I had a conversation with uh, Lizzie Arbogast from the Public Opinion uh, because she assured me on Twitter and everything else that this was going to be Air Taninis after the first game where they threw 18 passes. And I reminded her last night that they attempted three passes, I think, last week. Uh, uh, and then Chuck said something in the paper about, well, we don't need to throw. We're, we're winning. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> so he's only thrown, uh, he's thrown 45 passes so far, so far this season. And actually Chrisman has thrown two. So they've thrown 47 uh -oh. through three games, but you're absolutely right. It's not quite the same. Halftime, or excuse me, uh, at the uh, center of the field right now, you see the captains gathering. This game is sponsored by the U.S. Army. They're in town here helping out, and uh, they are uh, flipping the coins, and the officials are going to uh, help out there. And um, it, It's a pretty neat time because both teams are uh, really into this part of the game, so um, uh, we'll see what happens here. Blue Devils have... Except for the exception of, now again, there's only been three games, but except for the exception of the second game, they've scored on the opening drives, took control from that. It was against Littlestown where they faltered on the first series, but then came back and, and just dominated the game. Dominated. So we'll have to see what happens here tonight. Coin toss is underway. You see it out there as the captains meet at uh, at the center of the field, right at the big GA. It is a, a really nice night. Big spring traveling well down the interstate. They have a nice crowd here tonight, as does the Blue Devil fans. And, of course, it always helps when you're 3-0. and It always helps when you're 3-0. and And tonight's going to be, uh, uh, you know, again, we keep saying the sample size is not big enough for Greencastle. Tonight's going to be maybe their first test uh, from everyone they've played. This might be the best team they've played so far. And just kind of look where it is. Uh, we talked last night on Chalk Talk. We're not even sure about this one if it's the test yet. Well, you know, and, and you know, this the nice thing about this is Big Spring is an unknown. They are not looking ahead to right. to East Pensboro next week. Now, from all accounts, East Pensboro might be the team to beat. They may be. They have a running back that's just chugging up yardage left and right and uh so it, it'll be an interesting but you can't look past the big spring bulldogs you can't use that game at all well ladies and gentlemen please join us here as we join the Greencastle antrim high school marching band and the folks here at kelly field for the playing of our national anthem and please rise as we honor america with the playing of our national anthem Playing of our national anthem, Greencastle Antrim has won the toss, elected to receive to start the offensive series right off the bat. They will move from the west end to the, excuse me, the east end to the west end. That'll be right to the left on your video screen. And tonight's pregame show has been brought to you by Antrim Insurance, your local area insurance agent serving Greencastle, Waynesboro, Chambersburg, Mercersburg, and surrounding areas. Antrim Insurance, 169 South Antrim Way, Greencastle, and 1685 East Main Street in Waynesboro. Well, some other important games tonight, Mike, and we talked a little bit about the uh, uh, East Pensboro. They're at Shippensburg for a 7 p.m. game, and I think that will tell us a little bit uh, with a comparison with Shippensburg. It will tell us a little it, bit about that. It will expand the sample size. It will bit. expand the sample size. I spoke to a couple of the Shippensburg University coaches this afternoon, and they're going to that game because uh, East Pensboro has three kids they really like. The running back, they have a wide receiver and an offensive lineman that they, they want to keep looking at. And get a get an up close and personal view. So they are they do have some talent on that team. 
Well, they do, and uh, you know it'll just be. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Shippensburg, Shippensburg not as strong as last year. I think everybody understands that at this point of the schedule. But nevertheless, if they can come and play a quality game against East Pennsboro, it'll be an indication of what the Blue Devils can do next yeah, week. Yeah, what the league looks like or how it's going to shake out. Noah Keeter set the kickoff for the Bub, or excuse me, for the Bulldogs. He is a 5'11 uh, sophomore. He will kick it straight away to the right and will be taken down yonder by Votrell who's now in the running back position. Breaks one tackle, scoots by another one over the 30. Still on his feet as he goes down at the 39-yard line. Nice run back by um, Voltrell and yep. uh, sets up the Blue Devils quite nicely. Yeah, if you're Coach Barry, that's the one that you didn't want to see here. If you're going to kick off, you want to set the tone. Go down, hold him around the 20-yard line, get a big hit, get your sideline excited. And that was not the, uh, not the beginning that I think they talked about in the locker room. Andrew Voltrell, one of the four running backs that you'll see in this ball game here tonight. Silva will come near to our, our side of the field. They'll run a wing in the back, and Sprague goes out under center with one so back in the backfield who's going to get, they're going to run a little misdirection. It was run well received by Big Spring as Hines get the call on the sweep to the right, and he doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, Hines is going to run that power sweep to the right out of the wing position, and they just stunted a linebacker first play. Well, we came play where the guard pulls. The guard pulls, a linebacker came through, and he got a hit on Hines. And Hines did a nice job of not going down for a three-yard loss. Measle to the near side, Silva to the far side. Two in the backfield for the junior quarterback, Sprague. Under center, working from the right hash mark. Going to give it off now to the fullback. That is Voltrell again. Has some running room. And, or excuse me, Graham. And Graham up over the first down marker straight on the 50-yard line. And Graham comes out, and they come back and run the belly of the ISO play. More like a power. They have the outside linebacker stretched out a little bit. And that's, uh, you know, if, if and Barry has done this before. They run what they call a 3-5 defense. And the, a 3-5 defense, it's tough to stop the power. Graham by himself in the backfield, two wings on each side of the line, and they're going to give it this time to Hines. Hines breaks through the left side, has a little running room over the 40, dragged out of bounds inside the 40 at the 38-yard line, back-to-back -back first down for the Blue Devils. Yeah, it looks like they have it figured out. <laughs> it's just that simple, huh? Yeah, well, the first couple times you run against that 3-5, your practice guys can't show you that speed. And so you look at it and you see it, and they put five linebackers on the field, three defensive linemen. And I've coached a long time. I've never been able to find five linebackers. Measle to the far side, working from the left hash mark. Two in the backfield, tight end to the right. Handoff will go this time to Graham. Graham right side and gets knocked down after crossing the 35 at the 38-yard line. Brought down that time uh, by Big Spring. And a gain of five on the play. Greencastle has to be careful there. you got Morgan Bush is a little chippy out there with number 60 for the Bulldogs. That's two times in a row behind the play, pushing and shoving each other. And they don't want to get a 15-yarder here. But if you notice, they're just gashing them at the tackles here. Just off tackle. And the 3-5 off tackle is where it's at. Iso back. Wings both side. Wide out to the near side of the field. They're going to give it to the fullback. They, they spot that one, Mike, and brings up an interesting third down situation as really Graham goes nowhere. Yeah, he just tried to run the guard trap up inside. I, I like staying it out on those tackles because you can kick out, and block everybody down inside, and you see, you, you've seen how they've creased it so far on the, uh, on the off tackle play. See what they uh, send in. Coach Floor, the offensive coordinator, gives a signal to Sprague. Sprague breaks his huddle with just uh, Graham in the backfield. And straight back in the pocket, looking to pass. Sets up a little screen play nicely. Hits Graham. Graham has some blocking to the right side, over the 20. Down and knocked down inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. First down, Blue Devils. Wow. You, you would have thought after last year, you talked about it from the very beginning after last year's game. We saw that play probably four times in that game last year against the Bulldogs. And that's something that you're like, all right, we, we got we to gotta defend the screen. And what do they do? They come out they and they run out. it perfectly and, and Big Spring nowhere around it. Well executed. Wide outs both sides of the field. Wing to the left or in the slot position. They're going to give it to Hines in the slot. Hines still on his feet as he drags inside the 10 to the nine-yard line. Nine yard line. Yep, pulling the backside tackle. It was that time. Number 75, Sean Walt came up through the hole. And the off tackle is there because they're kicking it down, pulling through with the lineman. There's no one there for him to hit. And Walt ran through there almost untouched. 
Walk starts at the left guard position. Morgan Bush, as you mentioned, is the center. Andrew Scheller at right guard. Bobby Ryder at the right tackle position. They alternate sometimes at the left tackle. We'll catch that for you here. Two men in the backfield. They're going to give it to the fullback, who is knocked down in the backfield. Graham gets nowhere on that play. Yeah, Graham tried to run a little bit of that power to the outside, and they stretched it. JB did, or Big Spring did, Big Spring did a nice job filling from the inside out. They didn't get the down blocks that they usually get down there. Connor Shank is the other lineman, the left tackle. Greencastle will run a couple different people in. Ray Peck and Jared Stoliber at that tight end position. Which Sprague slips a little bit, but gets the ball into Hines' hands. Hines gets uh, tripped up from behind nicely uh, that time by Tristan Robb, and he goes down to a fourth down situation. Interesting. Blue Devils have yet to kick a field goal. And is this the time you bring him in? No. Okay. <laughs> Could you have at least thought about it? Okay. Yeah, uh, you're going to go here. You're going to try to pick up this first down. Uh, I'm sure Coach is a little bit bummed out right now because his guys all of a sudden aren't getting to that second level. Silva goes to the right side, then decides he needs to be to the left side to work from almost the center of the field. And they're going to give the... Sprague on the run, he stiff arms one, looks to throw, decides to keep it, gets hit the first down, and then knocked out of bounds down by the three-yard line. So Sam Sprague on the quarterback keeper of the bootleg. It wasn't really a design bootleg, but he kept it and got the first down. And that's what, if you're a coach, that's what you want to see. Get out on the corner, make a decision. If somebody's open, give it to him. If not, get to the sticks and get the first down. Sam did a nice job avoiding the tackle in the backfield. Got to the sticks for the first down. First and goal from the four. For the Blue Devils, 6.55, taking almost, well, they've taken five minutes off the clock in this drive, controlling the football. Wing to the left, that is Measel. Sprague, design run on the quarterback keeper down near the one-yard line, probably the half-yard line when they measure it. There was no question he was carrying the ball. No question coming out of there. He had the ball fake, and by the time he was almost done with the fake, he already had it tucked and was coming up inside. And Sam trying to sneak it in. He picked up three, stopped at the one. So so you're one yard away, second down. Second and one. I would look for something like the fullback Graham, who now is in the backfield right behind Sprague. For it, uh oh, Greencastle move. Yeah, you got Starlber. Starlber coming down on the down block. You can see where he was headed on the block. And uh, Hines was going with him, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was wondering if Hines was being in motion, though. Well, that's true. Yeah, you know, he could have been going in motion. Stolliver moves first at five yards, brings it back. Again, not what you want if you're the Blue Devils. Kind of drive is stalled a little bit here once he got inside the 20 yeah. of, of the Bulldogs. Has It has at that. You know, penalty-wise, they've been averaging about 68.3 yards, seven penalties, almost eight penalties a game. That's the first one on this uh, ball game so far. Same offensive lineup for the Blue Devils from the center of the field. Sprague long signal count. In motion will go Measle. Measle has it, trying to sweep right. And nice dive and, and stop there uh, by Garrett Chestnut. He gets a few more yards on it, but uh, Measle slow to get up. Now, Measle was slow to get up. He got hit in the backfield. Great play by Chestnut, but Measle lost the ball as well. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, but it, it looked the like they were going to call the, the uh, ball down, but everybody was jumping all over the place for it, and by the time Big Spring corralled it, they were out of bounds anyway. This will be the 13th play of the drive. What seemed to be started out really quick and, and gobbling up a lot of yards early has now really slowed down. And Coach Dennis is all right. If they score here, he's tickled with that. But I look to go wide side, right? Wide side is to the near side of the field. They will nope. give it to Hines. Hines to the right side has a running room and in for the Greencastle Antrim. Touchdown. Well, it took a while, but they finally got it. They got it. They came back. They ran the power sweep, gave it to Hines off tackle. That time they got the down blocks and they got to the second level, and you guys saw the crease on the film. Uh, easy enough for Hines to walk in, and, and what a great opening drive. Take seven minutes off the clock, 6.52, I guess you'd say, right? Yes, you would. And uh, 6.52 off the clock and get the touchdown. They do get the score. Extra point. Snap is down. Kick is up. 
and it is good. So the Blue Devils go up on this one, 7 nothing early. The extra point field goal brought to you by REMAX Premier Executives of State Line. Lowest Bear Agent, phone 597-2777. The FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. It's home equity season at FNM Trust. The best time of year to rake in big savings with some of the best rates around on a home equity loan or line of credit. To rake in your savings during home equity season, visit fmtrustonline.com. Equal housing lender. Chalk Tom. We talk high school football every Thursday night at 7.30 on midpenbroadcasting.com. Blue Devils took 13 plays, hampered by one penalty that pushed them back five yards. 62 yards on the drive. It ended when Hines took it on the power sweep to the right for a six-yard run, and Hanson made the extra point good. It is 7-0. Hanson, who had uh, had been magnificent coming into West Perry game, uh, he was 9-9 nine and, nine and had three uh, failed attempts. Two, one was blocked and two just went wide to the right side, but now he goes 14-17, well over 80% for the year uh, so far, doing a great job kicking the extra extra points and he will do the kickoff chores. Kurt does a much better job at this altitude. <laughs> when it's not so high, the breathing not so bad. Straight down the middle, he crunches one out, down to the three yard line. That's where it's taken by Big Spring. Big Spring will bring it around the right side and that is going to be Cooper, one of the Tristan. Cooper brings it back to the 29 yard line. Big Spring offense tries out for the first time. Big Spring gets the ball at about the 29 yard line, their own 29. Cooper brings it out. I'm sure Coach Sinitis said kick it deep, but don't kick it to Cooper. And he kicked it right to him. Well, so. in fairness, Cooper was the deep man, the only one there. So. Right, right, right. But how many times have we seen that squib, right? Yeah. How about well, you squib it down the middle? <laughs> what are you doing kicking it right to the guy? But he doesn't get too many positive yardage. Eight, uh, nine past the... Uh, to the 29, so nine yards on that. They'll start from the 29. Here they go. Under center, Chestnut working from the pistol. In motion, they will send Cooper, and they're going to give it to the big fullback. That is Rob. Rob goes straight up the middle for maybe a one or two yard uh, gain on the play. Yeah, nice job by Starler for getting up the field and putting a hit on the quarterback after he gave the ball away. Just getting, letting them know you're there. Let them know you're there. And they run that little play inside. Uh, again, uh, this the spread it, it's going to put those guys and these Thank guys have done it for a couple well. years now they put greencastle in a bad spot when they run that motion across the linebackers got to play run and pass three receivers to the right side of the field one solo out to the left and you say that's normally when they go to the left chestnuts calling the signals two step back throws out here as a man open catch is made and then chased out of bounds at the 42 yard line for the blue devils he is run down there by Clayton Hartman. And Bobby Ryder gets a hit on him that time, and he's on the ground. They're called a timeout. He's going to have to come out. And that's what that's exactly what I'm talking about there. The kid ran the, the flat route, the inside receiver and trips. So the outside linebacker has to come across that formation to cover him, and he, and he can't. He's always going to be a step behind. With a good throw, he's going to be wide open. If you play man behind it, he's going to catch it. What you're going to see later is the wheel route where he's going to come to the sideline and then get up the field. And that outside linebacker is going to be in trail mode the whole time. You mentioned that last week a couple times when they uh, West Perry did did the exact same thing, and they were, you know, they actually the, the secondary Blue Devils have been playing well. They did a great, great. job last week. Uh, they did give up four passes to um, Ma Chase or Chase May's little brother. Wasn't no, it? it wasn't May's. It was it was another runner, not important at this point in time. Another receiver for him, uh, but uh, that was it. And and really they they were they did a great job. Uh, holding them down and, and then stopping the run. They did give up a touchdown. The first string did. Second string gave up one, too. Chestnut will come out, as you mentioned, so they'll have to bring in their backup quarterback. He, he, if you saw him, he ran off on his own accord, so I don't think he'll set out more than one play here, Mike. Yeah, one play, and he'll, he'll come right back in. And uh, The difference between this year's team and the last couple of years is these guys can get pressure on the quarterback up front, and they're flying up the field. At that time, Bobby Ryder hit him. Last time, Starlipper hit him. Uh, so they're going to continue to do that, get pressure on him. Hopefully he doesn't have enough time to stand back there to throw that wheel route. Nick Black, he's a freshman, 5'11", 155 pounds. He'll come in at the quarterback position on a third and three situation. So for them, he gets a little chance coming out of this uh, pistol formation. One back in the backfield, and that is Rob. Rob's the fullback in this lineman. Three-step drop, looking to throw, fires across the middle, and completes the pass to John Paisley for the first down. Well, maybe they won't take him out, Mike. Maybe they won't, right? 
I, I think when I've looked at the stats online, they both have played. Okay. Both quarterbacks have played this year. Both have quite a few uh, quite a few down series, I guess you'd say. So first and ten for the Big Spring Bulldogs, their first of the um, ball game. Blue Devils had four first downs there in that opening drive, which is uh, a good way to eat up a chunk of grass and at the same time, or turf, as you would like to say, or and time off the clock. Two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Black and the gun position. Heavy pressure throws out here. Almost intercepted by Hartman and falls down incomplete. Hartman did not expect that ball to come. And then when he saw it, he couldn't get himself slowed down enough. And it was behind him. And he was like, oh, my God, he was thinking six all the way, right? He was. I think I could score on this. Uh, so bad, bad throw behind, but the pressure created that throw, created that opportunity for the Blue Devils that you'd like to cash in on that. Almost looked like a screenplay setup. It was it, that the yeah. rush was that great. Yeah, interesting enough, as well as the defense secondary has played for Greencastle, no interceptions so far this season. Well, that's they, they dropped them. Well, they have. You're, just, you're absolutely that, right. Greg. He just dropped okay. it. and that's like the <laughs> you said that against Littlestown. That's like the third drop one. Back to pass, looking Chestnut back in the ball game. He's going to roll higher to the right with heavy pressure. Throws down, filled, and completes the pass to number nine. That is Anthony Tressler, the big Again, tight end, and he gets it to the 50-yard line, a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, nice job by the quarterback coming out, running through on the throw. He gets it, and, and Measles shaking up on the play. That's the second time tonight he's kind of gotten shaken up out there, so he, he could be dinged from that. That first play, and now that's a big tight end, number nine. That That is, and uh, I noticed that Sprague had coverage on him. He's 6'2", 180 pounds. He is their go-to receiver. Sprague up into the linebacking position instead of one of his uh, cornerbacks because he has that assignment. He's usually the go-to person. Uh, or he Rather, he he looks after the person uh, who has the most receptions, I guess. Oh, and I got a big spring guy down, too, yeah, on, do. this, on this sideline. I did not know that. So you got two guys down here. Measle trying come to up. get up. Uh, trouble with Measle, not the trouble with Measle. Measle is one of those wing back that uh, alternates sometimes or plays at the same time as Sprig does in that position. Right. So they're not it has have as much depth as they normally would with Sprig at quarterback position. They're still working on the big spring uh, person. We can't see who that is down here. They're right in front of us, but it does give us the opportunity to tell you that this broadcast brought to you by the investment and trust experts at FNM Trust. Point your future in the right direction with smarter retirement planning from FNM Trust. For more than a century, we provided members of the community with personal guidance and expert financial management solutions. We can do the same for you to reach your goals tomorrow. Schedule your free no obligation retirement review at FNM Trust today. I, 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 was, I gave you some misinformation. That's a Blue Devil down on the sideline. Oh, okay. But the Big Spring trainer came over because the Greencastle trainer was taking care of another athlete. Got to like that. Appreciate that from them. Looking after both both teams, looking after each other. 2.47 as the clock is stopped here in the first quarter. Blue Devils leading this 7-0 opening drive resulted in a score. That went for 62 yards on 13 plays. And then Hines took it over from uh, six yards out. Hartman. And Hartman is the other injured ball player who almost had that interception moments ago. Uh, appears to be a leg injury. He'll come to the bench. So Blue Devils will make shift here with their defense a little bit. Third and one. It's a big play in the game. It is early on. Third down, one Bulldog. So they'll split a wide receiver to the right, slot to the left, and a wide out to the left also. Two in the backfield as they work from the pistol. In motion on the jet sweep. He'll just come to the right side. And Chestnut on the uh, option read has some running room and has one person to beat. Now he's got to get, there he goes, down at the 30, inside the 30, at the 27-yard line. And someone didn't stay home. Mike. Yeah, did, did, he just kind of picked his way and came to the backside. And when you're a backside linebacker, you got a trail on the inside hip. And the backside linebacker got over the top, and he and was able to cut back. Tackle. And the other guy was gone. And, and the other guy moved because... The other guy who came across the field in motion, and the outside linebacker to the side he came to had to back away to let him come through on the motion and the man coverage. And so that, that motion kind of messed everything up for the Blue Devils. And with it, a big first down as they just needed one, and then they pick up 22 on that carry by the quarterback, Chestnut. Garrett Chestnut, 5'8", junior, 135 pounds. He's in the 
pistol formation again. Step back one, two, gets it away, and overthrows, or really just in front of his intended receiver of Josh Paisley, and that'll bring up a second down. Chestnut not the biggest guy out on the field, is he? No, he isn't. He isn't. Well, with that Greencastle line, not too many people are going to be the biggest. That, that, that is absolutely true on that, but Chestnut stands. They got him at 5'8", 135, and I, I'm telling you he's about 5'6". Programs tend to give an inch or two. They tend to. And 10 or 20 pounds. If, if you and I, they would probably do the opposite, take 10 or 20 pounds off to make us look a little more fit. Or list me at 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Perfect weight for 6'6". Six, six. Uh, <laughs> first man through on that little play there. That time it was Austin Singleton, the ball carry, and Greencastle Antrim read that one well. Ryder with the tackle, two-yard loss. So it brings up a third and 12. Big Spring offensively have been scoring about 15 points a game. They've given up about seven. So they're they're at their average in give-ups. And uh, Blue Devils scored first on that drive. We watched that at Littlestown. We watched the Reynolds, number seven, the receiver for them, do different things and come off the field in crucial situations. This time, Big Spring takes number nine, the big tight end off the field. I'm not sure I like that call. Well, they have... Four receivers to the right side, one to the left, nobody in the backfield. Here comes the guy from the uh, outside on the on the jet sweep, and Chestnut will try to run the ball himself, and finally brought down by Graham Hurst. Hurst shredding well that time, only let him get to the 26-yard line. Yeah, you put four. I always say you put three receivers into the short side of the field, it's going the other way. You put four receivers into the short side, then you run motion to it. It's <laughs> got to go the other way. There's too many guys in the short yeah. side of the field. You got to do it, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Fourth down from the 26-yard line. So Coach Barry has uh, a decision to make here. Seems to be taking his time. He's got quarter here. Uh, I don't know if he does. I don't think he does. Is he going to take the timeout? He does take the timeout. Big Spring will burn the first of three here in the first half. It's 18 seconds left in quarter number one. Believe it or not, Greencastle's only touched the ball once in the in the quarter. They scored on that one. Big Spring now has answered with a nice drive. So a uh, little ball control football going on here right now. But so far, pretty decent ball game. Yeah, pretty decent game. And, and Big Spring, I'm not surprised because we saw this two years ago. Uh, Big Spring, just the way they use their motion, uh, the way they line up, and some of the things they do, they had they've had offensive success against Greencastle defenses with their with their sets and their motion and their play calling. So I can't say as I'm overly surprised by this, but I think at the end of the day, Greencastle guys up front will dominate this game and, and wear the Bulldogs down and end up end up being being right where they want to be when it started. Talking to some of the administrators from Big Springs, uh, Big Spring before the game, and they were impressed with the numbers that we had. And they said, you know, our ninth graders were up, and they saw the numbers they had. They wish they had our numbers. So it's, and I mentioned to them, really only about five, six ball players going both ways. So a lot of rest on the part of the Blue Devils. Big Springs, everybody's going both ways just about. Fourth and eight. Four to the right, one to the left, same thing. They're coming this way. Now he's going to roll this way and throw it back over the field, and there's going to be a... Nope. Nope. Okay. It wow. Was, it, wow. I, I thought that might be uh, Luke Gega. Kega got his... Uh, uh, actually, I think he knocked the guy down, to be real honest with you. I, well, I think... I'm, I, I was thinking that their feet kind of got intertwined as they were running. And, 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 and as I say all the time, Greg, when the call like that is made... I immediately find Coach Barry. If he's not having a fit over there, then I'm thinking, ah, oh, he was okay with it, and and he did not. He, they weren't they weren't going crazy. So I think yeah. they probably just think their feet their feet got tangled. So from the 25 yard line, Blue Devils will take over their second possession of the game. First handoff for the Blue Devils. It will go to um, Votrel. Votrel, thank you. And Votrel comes up. And eh, not going to get a whole lot on that one. In fact, they're not even going to move the yard marker. First quarter has come to an end here at Greencastle. The Blue Devils on top, 7 to nothing, on the FNM Trust Sports Network on midpenbroadcasting.com and gametimepa.com. Hey, insurance companies that want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads can go right ahead, as long as it's not my money paying for it. For seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance, I go to Erie Insurance. 
where a great price is just the start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products. But don't just take it from me. Talk to your local Erie agent. Call Antrim Insurance. In Greencastle, call 593-0500. In Waynesboro, call 762-4565. This is Greencastle Antrim Blue Devils football on midpenbroadcasting.com. First quarter over, Blue Devils lead it 7 0. This is their second possession of the ball game. Our good friend Gary Klein and uh, Mike Berger are at Central Dolphin at Speed Ebersole Stadium as the uh, it's just a different Dolphin. Last week was Lower Dolphin, this week Central Dolphin, Chambersburg Trojans on Midpen Broadcasting and GameTimePA.com. Um, yeah, Gary's got video up there this week. Is so that what you were asking That's me about? what I was asking. I got three things going on at one I time, know. and I, I'm not good at that. Well, it's okay, you know, as, uh, as you are our producer here and our engineer <laughs> all in one. I'm glad you bring That's Steve it. along as our cameraman, or you would be doing that. <laughs> and I saw that at a basketball game once, and it wasn't pretty. I think you had Luke doing it for a while, and then Luke gave up on it. Blue Devil's going to run the misdirection play. Measles gets the ball, breaks one tackle, and gets knocked down from behind at the 20, or excuse me, the 32-yard line. I think they ran that counter crisscross there, and I think they ended it for a big game because I don't even think Big Spring thought they were able to get that handoff off in all the traffic, handoff off. That's pretty good. I, well, no, it is. You, you said it exactly right. Hey, thank you. No, you're quite welcome. Back behind center is Sprague Voltrell. Behind him, two wings, and receiver to the left, tight end to the right side. They're going to give it straight up the middle to Voltrell. Voltrell. Or excuse me, Graham. I don't know. I know. It's the sevens. Graham. But it's getting. No, it was Votrell. It was Votrell. You were right the first time. And it's a first down. So he was able to get.